Andy joins us now from Madison to talk. First thing first, Greg, congratulations on this great honor. Uh, take me back to early February. You guys are six and six in the league, 13 and 10 overall. Where was your team then? Well, thanks, Mike, and I really appreciate everybody, all the support and colleagues and uh, media and everything um, acknowledging me, but more importantly, our team and, and what they've accomplished. This is a team award, and you're not, not in this position if you don't have a really good team, and I'm fortunate to be able to coach those guys along with the job my assistant coaches have done has been phenomenal. But, uh, you know, we were, we were trying to find our way, and we're literally – um, I know it sounds very cliche, but walking one day at a time, one practice at a time, one game at a time, and uh, just trying to get better every day. And fortunately uh, for all of us, um, our team did a phenomenal job of rallying around each other and bonding together and continue to grow and get better as the season unfolded. Well, since that point, you haven't lost. So what feels different about the team? I, I don't know if anything feels different. I mean, I think the chemistry and the the camaraderie and the unification of the team has grown immensely. And they've always been a close group, but I think it's taken a whole, on a whole new level now. And they played so unselfish. I mean, they've just concerned themselves with playing for what's on the front of the jersey. They don't care who gets the credit. They don't care who scores the points as long as Wisconsin is successful. And, and we've talked a lot about, you know, just find a way. And this group has continued to find a way and continue to improve, as I said, over the last, you know, four to six weeks. Well, and speaking of credit, now that a time has passed, you deserve credit, your staff deserves credit, and the rest of your kids deserve credit for losing your second leading scorer halfway through the Big Ten season and somehow adjusting and even playing better. How would you describe the way your team adjusted after the loss of Kobe King? Well, I think they came together and they understood that the whole was greater than the sum of the parts. And once they figured that out and really believed in that, uh, they just took off, and we had unbelievable contributions across the board. You know, we we don't have anybody in the first or second team all Big Ten team, um, but we've been able to do it by committee. And we've had in the last six, seven, eight games, we've had different leading scores almost every time. Um, and like I said, they've each taken turns stepping up when the moment's been right. So I think they've just uh, understood that if we bond together, we stick together, we stay true to who we are, and, and we continue to work, um, great things can happen. This is a the ultimate definition of what a team can accomplish when they work together. Let's talk about some of those players you have on that team. What has Nate Reavers meant to your squad this year? Well, he's anchored our front line, and obviously he had a lot thrown at him early when we didn't have Micah Potter, and had lost Ethan Happ from a year ago. So he had a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, but uh, I think when it comes winning time, Nate Reavers shows up big. I mean, big block shots, big baskets down the stretch on Saturday at Indiana. Um, hit some huge shots to get us going early in that game. But, uh, you know, he's just continued to improve as time has gone on uh, through the course of his career here. But like I said, when it comes down to crunch time, I, I definitely want him on the floor for my team. You brought up Micah Potter, who, of course, finally was allowed to play for you guys after December came. What did he add to this squad? Well, he brought experience and leadership from the moment he set foot on campus last December when he transferred. And he's been an immense um, addition to our locker room just from the culture standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, as I've talked about. He brought experience and, and obviously physically what he can do. It's another big body, took pressure off Nate. Uh, you know, I could play them together at times, but they also complemented each other. When one needed a break, the other one can come in and, and do some really good things. And we really didn't take a step backwards on the front line. In fact, at times we really we invigorated a, our team with the play that they complemented each other with. So. Um, he's been a much welcome addition. He's been terrific, and it started with what he did off the court and how he's helped our locker room. How much of your team's success do you think had to do with the names returning to the back of the jerseys for your players? 100, 110? Uh, you know, we really never talked about that. And, and uh, once we got into the season, we made the decision, you know, almost a year ago to do it or um, the last spring when we had to order the jerseys. Uh, and, and they just talked about, I really left it up to the team and the older guys on the team. And, and they talked about what it meant to them, what it meant to their personal families, their, their hometowns, their high schools. Uh, but they all came back to about the right reasons and talking about the right reasons that they take great pride in represent what, representing what's on the front of the jerseys and their families take great pride in that. So I knew they were doing it or we were making that decision for the right reasons. And I know sometimes as a coach, you battle that internally, like, if you put a name on the back, is it going to 
is going to lead to more selfish reasons and, and selfish thinking. And this really didn't. I think if anything, this led to more unselfish thinking and, and uh, like I said, help this team grow together by representing where they came from individually. But at the end of the day, let's play for Wisconsin. And this group has done a phenomenal job of that. All right. So I'll put you down for 110 percent on that. Sounds good. Um, OK. <laughs> You have done a great job of doing what you're supposed to do, which is talk about your players and talk about your staff. But let me ask a personal one for you. Tom Izzo could have won this award this year. Pat Chambers could have. Steve Peichel, Brad Underwood, Fran McCaffrey. This is an incredible year for head coaching jobs in this league. What does it mean to you personally that you're the one who gets it? Well, I just, like I said earlier, I appreciate my colleagues and peers across the Big Ten uh, for, for their recognition of what our team has done and like i said if, if you don't have a really good team you're not sitting i'm not sitting here today in this chair so the credit goes to how the team performs and obviously i'm the one that the name is attached to it but there there's so many people that have their fingerprints on this team's success that i can't begin to name all the names or i'll leave somebody out but uh you know, just you know appreciative obviously my mentor and and the prior coach here won this award several times and you mentioned coach Izzo, coach painter two guys that I really respect in the league that have been doing this for a long time and, and have had that same type of team success and have earned that, uh, that individual coaching award. Um, so it, it means a lot because I understand I grew up watching the Big Ten. I know the history of the Big Ten very, very well. And uh, like I said, I'm just very fortunate and very humbled by this recognition. Greg, of course, this season was not a regular season. It wasn't just X's and O's. A piece of your heart and a piece of your entire team's heart has been missing due to the car accident for Howard Moore, your assistant, where he lost his wife and a child, and, and he's still uh, fighting as we speak. Th those of us who've been lucky enough to know him, even for just a little bit, know what he's like and what he means to us. But to you, explain to me what he means to you and to your team. Um, Mike, I don't know if I can explain. I mean, it's just been, you know, he was one of the first co phone calls I made. He was back working for you guys at BTN when I got the interim job back in December of 15. And um, I, I know I derailed his track to Hollywood by pulling <laughs> him away from TV and back into the, onto the bench. But, you know, he helped solidify and, and rectify that season. And he's been a rock ever since. And obviously for him and his family to have to go through what they've walked through over the last 10 months is, is words can't describe how uh, life shattering that has been and heartbreaking it has been. But he's been in our thoughts every single day. Uh, obviously we have the team kind of adopted the slogan, be more, do more, for more. And how ironic that, uh, you know, we win on Saturday to capture a piece of the Big Ten championship and it's 60 to 56 is the final score. And I wrote it on the board after the game in the locker room that the differential was four. And we've been talking about four more meaning the four family members of Howard, Jen, Jarrell, and Jaden all year and really keeping those at the center of our hearts and, and what um, life is about. You know, we, we get caught up sometimes in, in the social glitz and glamour of what this sport does or what society puts on us at times. And, and that has really, that whole experience has put things into perspective, put life into perspective, that uh, there are way more important things to, than how many jump shots we make or how many rebounds we get. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm excited to be able to walk into, uh, to see Coach Moore this afternoon with that Big Ten Championship trophy and let him hold it and let him see it and rub it and give him his championship hat and a championship t-shirt um, because he's been a part of this in our hearts, even though he hasn't been able to be with us here physically. That's beautiful, Greg. Uh, and when you do, please, of course, tell him we all send our love here as well. Greg Gard, what a wonderful season for you. Congratulations, Big Ten Coach of the Year. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for having me on.